Welcome to another edition of Duffus Meets, and today we are joined by Zach Tomasi. Zach, how you doing? I'm great. Really good to see you. How you doing? Ah, likewise, likewise. And, and um, you know, Zach, you're affiliated to a, a few other charities, and you also have a, another background that we're going to talk about. But um, yeah, I mean, you've got a lot going on, so I, I don't even know where to start, really. But um, I'm well, guided by you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, look. I mean, I, you know, obviously the, the the introduction came through a, a mutual friend, Chris Lewis, who's uh, just an amazing individual, inspirational, lifelong friend, and um, and he said to me, "Look, you should have a word with Brian." And obviously, I've um, uh, you know I was aware of what you were doing, but I've now got a chance to meet the great man himself, uh, which, is, <laughs> which is wonderful. And actually, look at the sterling work that you're doing with the charity, but also you as a person, how you're helping others as well which, which which is truly inspirational no i mean i mean listen i mean my my situation is not particularly special um i've got a background um i've had three careers and my first career was a professional chef i was i went to college and funny enough the, the best thing best day's work i ever did was go to college because i met my now wife for 42 years uh, wow. at college so I, you know, I'm, I, I, I did really well, and I'm not a bad chef either. You know, so, so that's okay. But you know, at the time when I was when I was was cooking, um, it wasn't fashionable, not like it is now. You know, and as as we discussed before, you know, everyone wants to smash an avocado and put it on toast and <laughs> want the recipe, and, and then it was, uh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a chef. Oh, you cook, do you? Move on. You know, um, but it was great fun. It was great grounding. I was, you know, I learned a lot about life. Um, you know, and and then, but then I, I thought actually I want to be, I want to do something more. Um, you know, my my background is I'm Greek Cypriot. My mother and father came over in in the fifties and um, didn't speak English. In fact, I didn't speak English in, for the first part of my life because they just spoke Greek in the house, and so I had a, so consequently I had a real problem at school trying to keep up. Um, some say I, don't, I still don't speak the language, and, and I wouldn't disagree, but. Um, but what that what that did was it just you know I I was on the receiving end of racism I mean the whole thing it was just awful um, this you know the worst of society was in in the sixties and that you know when you saw that some of the programs were on television you know we we were dumb then we were dumb you know and uh, it was it was awful but that that really pushed me forward because I thought well actually I can achieve something so you know I managed to secure a position in investment banking on the support side for a company called Solomon Brothers. And I had 15 years working right the way through that industry. And, and my last opportunity was actually with Goldman Sachs in, in London, running a big chunk of Europe's business, which was, which was wonderful. So very lucky there. But I worked there and I slowly fell out of love that, with that because it was so far away from reality. You earned decent money. You met some pretty average people. Not every one of them were average, but they weren't particularly inspirational. You know, they were all chasing the coin and it was, you know, how much more we could make. And it didn't sit very well for me. And um, so I decided to try and retire. You know, I didn't really work because I was too young and I didn't have a plan. And then uh, I decided to go, and, uh, you know, by, you know, sort of, I guess by accident, I I went into professional cricket. So it's just that, I mean, you, you couldn't write a CV like this. It's going, I've got no business, you know, achieving what I achieved. But it just seemed to work, you know. But, you know, I enjoyed my time, uh, uh, you know, right the way through. There's nothing I regret because everything has sort of helped me become me. No, completely. So there's a lot of things there. And I mean, being a chef, that must still come in handy right now. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I mean, if you can get the ingredients, we never run out of bread in this house. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so we're carb overloaded. And my wife's a professional chef because we met there as well. So now people like to come around for dinner. But actually, they can't come around now unless we feed them, you know, on the end of a stick, you know. But um, <laughs> the kids do collect, we do drop off food parcels on their doorstep. So no, that comes in handy. But I, it's, it's fair to say Janice, my wife, does majority of cricket but then I go all, I go all sort of caveman you know I, 
I, I, I light a pizza oven or I cook a barbecue and, you know, <laughs> I, I do that. But and I, I do enjoy cooking. It does come in handy. So as you said, you kind of went from the business world into to cricket, which are sort of like two different worlds completely. And yeah, yeah. you was in the professional professional game. You was like chief exec, right, of, of, yeah. of, of, of Sussex. Sussex, yeah. I, yeah, I had four years there. Yeah, I was, I was very fortunate. I mean, I, I was, I say, born and bred uh, in the Uppington Castle. My local club was, was Surrey at the Oval. I used to go there as a child. Um, and, and watch my cricket, always a cricket fan, but there's no way I was ever going to make a living there you know, or do anything. But I ended up um, having six years there and ran for the 2005 and 2009 Ash years. It was just wonderful and great, great experience. And I fell in love with the, the sport all over again, albeit from an administration point of view, you know, and, and people, it's nice because people were there because they wanted to be there. Uh, they weren't forced to be there. People were, you know, enjoying the, the, their leisure time and people were getting close to their fans and, you know, to, or to their heroes rather. And it was just, it was, it was great. But I, I, I did six years there. Then, um, then I moved to Hampshire, just went down there for a special project for, I, I worked at Hampshire for just shy of two years, which was great. Again, a really nice club, very different club, great people. And then um, I thought, well, that's it. I, I was commuting backwards and forwards from Croydon to Hampshire, and that didn't work. And then I got the call to go and interview for the role of um, chief exec at Sussex. And, you know, um, I, I went there and, and somehow I managed to get the role. I mean, it just really surprised me, but I got the role and um, four years, absolutely loved it. Great club, wonderful people. But what was important to me was I could actually test myself because... You know, it was my name on the door. And then I don't mean that egotistical. So I was able to help with my team, shape the culture, tackle some of the issues around people development and things like that. Built a really good admin team and worked really good, well with the coach and the governing body. It was great fun. So all my business practice really came in handy because the important thing with the chief exec, you know, the truth is we should be like a B-day. We should be in the corner of the room and no one should know what we're for. You know, because, you know, it's not about me. It's about the product. It's about everyone else. And so you play a supporting role, even though you're accountable. So they don't need a fan running the business. Now, it was quite clear. I ran the business and my head coach ran the sport. And that was really important. Yes, he was accountable to me, but he ran his business as, as everyone did. So it was about delegation. But it was, good. It was great fun. And, and, you know, I traveled all over the place and watched cricket and in some nice places, although I didn't really watch a lot of cricket, I was always working. But I did that for um, for four years, and yeah, no regrets. It was wonderful. You know, I do miss it, but you know, yeah. And I was going to ask that. I was literally going to ask. I was going to say, like, do, do do you miss it? Yeah, I mean, I do. I miss I miss a lot of the people. I miss being part of something. I think it's a lot of it is to do with where I am in my life. I, I retired three years ago. Um, I had a medical problem about five years ago where I had a, a viral encephalitis and I was quite unwell. It was just one of these freak viruses and, and that gave me an opportunity to reflect and, and, and plan what I, you know, what I want to do with my next chapter. Um, so I didn't do anything for a while. I wanted to go back and prove myself, prove to myself that I was able still to do the job, you know, and, and, you know, and, and, and maybe that's pig headed. I don't know what it is. Maybe that's just me, but I just wanted to, you know, but well, I'm not ill, I'm going to be fine, you know. But it gave me an opportunity to reevaluate. So I remember going off to see my family in Cyprus. It was, I went off on my own to Cyprus, as I occasionally do. My wife says, go, go and be Greek for a week, you know, go and see your family. And, and so, I go and, so I go and sort of lay on a beach and um, eat fruit and, you know, and just think about the world and, and everything else. And I thought, actually, you know what? I'm done now. I want to, I want to, I want to do other things. So, yeah, I do miss it, but, you know, I have no regrets retiring because it's, it's given me a quality of life that, you know, I'm very, you know, I'm privileged. I'm really, really privileged. Do you still like, I guess, with, with being that role in cricket and stuff like that, do you still follow the game and, and pay interest yeah. in what's going on? I, of course, yeah, I follow the game. It's a great game. And where I, and I've watched more cricket since I retired than when I actually worked in it. And um, I guess over the years, I guess over the years, like the, the profile of the game, the game has changed, hasn't it? Obviously, there's things that's still okay. up to 2020 and... Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, 2020 makes the money. I mean, obviously, you've got the new tournament that was due to be launched this year, the 100-ball tournament, and that people's opinions are divided about that. But, of course, you know, 
it's all well and good, but here we are, you know, in, in sort of mid-May, and, and, there's, and there's nothing going on, you know, no sport being played, and um, no income, and sponsors' obligations, and everything else. So cricket and sport, well, in fact, the world is actually precariously balanced at the moment. That's the truth of it, you know. Um, but we all want the things that we love, don't we? That's the thing. We want our family. We want to watch our sport. We want to go to the pub or whatever it is, you know. We, 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 we just want what we call normal. But life's going to be different after this. Uh, and I just hope that we learn something from this opportunity of it. I've all been on pause. Um, I hope so. I sincerely hope so. How have you found the whole the whole lockdown situation and this pandemic stuff? How have you found that? Well, without being too flippant, welcome to retirement. You know, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, you know, what, what did we? I mean, I, because I've been in this situation with you know Janice and I, our kids obviously aren't here. They're with their families and and what have you. Um, we we had a you know we we my wife and I rub along really well. We get on really well. We do we do things together. Yeah. Uh, I have my own interests and, and she sort of tolerates me going off trying to learn to play the guitar or whatever it might be, you know, and, and whatever. So that is pretty much the same. The thing that really I, I struggle with um, is the lack of personal contact with the ones that I love. Yeah. And, and I think the rest I can deal with, if I've got to wear a face mask and cue to go and hope there's a bag of flour, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's not important. It's not life changing and we're really privileged we've got you know a, a garden a small garden so we can be outside um we 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 walk every single day together we'll do a long walk and now that can do more and now i'm going to meet up with friends you know from a distance and do that but the, the the personal connection and personal interaction is what i miss and i'm to be honest with you i just don't ever want to say the word zoom again you know, I'm, I'm done with it. You know, I'm, this is the only way we can speak. But I'd rather be sat over the table having a coffee, having a coffee, and, and actually getting to know you. But uh, we can't at the moment. But you know, that's about it, really. I mean, it's it's tough. But you know, I just want I want to make sure that what we learn from this leaves a lasting positive legacy, and and we don't forget that in a lot of ways this has brought the country together. And I think that's key. That's a very good point to to sort of like conclude on. I hope we as uh, individuals and as a, as a nation we learn from this we use this time wisely to kind of think and always think ahead of the curve and you know um you know what what you know look at what things will look will look like when we come out of this because there isn't going to be the normal as we we know it before um yeah. but it's, 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 it's taking advantage of that and a lot of people have been struggling um with regards to how they're using their time. So it's good that you're saying, you know, you, you're, you're able to kind of get in your exercise and stuff like that and have your routines. Make yeah, it's really important. It's, and it's amazing how many people have said, I'm not spending any money now. Yeah. You know, it's quite, it's quite interesting, yeah. you know. You know, petrol, zero. Clothes, zero. Food shopping, £3,000. You know, <laughs> 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 it's, 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 it's amazing. Uh, now, now, clearly, that's because we're in this bubble and things will, will change. But, you know, and, and we'll go back to it. But, you know, I just, I just think this is a wonderful opportunity that when I go for a walk, I see people, we speak, we say good morning yeah. because we want that interaction. Sure. The times I used to commute to London and, then, and see people for 15 years and never speak to them because, you know, I'm too busy looking at them. Because I was so important because I had loads of emails. I was, you know, I'm, I was the man, you know, absolute rubbish. You know, that's not what defines you. But, you know, it was, you know, it, this has been great to, to, to meet people. I mean, people meet their neighbours for the first time on a Thursday when they go out and clap. I mean, yeah. you know, you know and, and we talk about isolation. There's people living in isolation all the time all the time this is this is no different to them they can't go out you know they've got no one to support them so let's let's hope we you know we we have something positive come out is when the clapping stops i mean i've written a little piece and put it on chris chris's cancer community website he, he hosted it and listen for anyone listening please check out that piece by zach on um chris's uh, cancer community just just go and log on i have read through it it's, it's really good it's really insightful and it's a it's a bit like what we're saying about being ahead of the curb and what happens when we sort of go after this you know yeah um so you're 
what I know of you and hearing you're a very busy man still, even though you're semi-retired, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how have you been sort of using your time since you've come out of the game of cricket? Well, it, it, you know, I, I, I mean, I basically set a plan for my retirement. I think anything in life, you can, you, you know, you need a, you have to have a plan, even if it's to go to the shops, you know, you've got to make sure of everything, you know, whatever it is, you know, I think you notionally have a plan. And, and because I'd had failed attempts at trying to retire before, uh, I thought, well, I need some structure. So the first thing was about getting myself fit. That was really, really important. That would then allow me to spend time with my family and do the, you know, the, the things that are, you know, really, really, uh, yeah, all things are important, but that particularly important. Family's everything for me. So I lost a lot of weight. I, you know, when you know, I joined the gym and, and everything else. And, you know, I've got myself in, in shape. I'm going to be 65 in, in June. So, you know, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm at the, I'm, I'm knocking on the door at the at risk register for this COVID <laughs> thing. So, so I want to defy the, defy that, you know, uh, but, but that was one bucket. Then the next one really was about putting something back, something I've been doing for years. And so I was asked uh, by Chris to be ambassador for Simpal. So I do some work with them. Um, and, and, uh, Rainbow Trust, uh, I'm trustee of uh, uh, basically the uh, the Rainbow Trust Children's Charity. Um, I do some uh, mentoring, and you know, and basically I get involved with with a, a, you know a lot of support type things, which is something like this, whatever. If someone needs some assistance, you know, I've helped people try and re restart their careers, give them a bit of advice and what have you, um, and, and and do that. And then the final piece, which was important for me to transition was really about doing some work some consultancy where that pays me a little bit of money which I can then you know do whatever I, I wish with and, and that's really about weaning myself off this being busy and, and everything else so what you find over a period of time you know that you end up doing less work because you're probably not as relevant and people can't afford it or they don't want to do it whatever it may be and then everything else tends to balance out so um it's you know i keep myself busy you know i spend time with the people that i love i can't, i mean it's been great because i've i've caught up with people that you naturally lose contact with uh, yeah. so you know we have the dreaded zoom call or we'll we'll, we'll call each other and you know and and it, and, it, and, that, and that's been nice and, and equally i've taken this opportunity to ditch a load of people i thought were you know decent and they're out of my contacts now so we move on don't we so yeah. nothing wrong with that <laughs> doing a bit of housekeeping <laughs> Bit of housekeeping, bit of detox. <laughs> exactly, but yeah, but 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 that's it. And you know, but like like you, like anyone, we, you know, we we would we would like to have that connection with our family, and you know, and embrace the ones that we love, and that. And I'm sure that will happen in in time. And you know, this has been this has been a way of testing us, I think. And um, and it, you know, we'll we'll be we'll be, you know, obviously we we mourn every single person that's sadly passed. Uh, you know, and they should never be forgotten and the people that have helped us through this but I think we're emerged stronger over the period of time where a lot of things will be addressed and you know if it's sustainable that's another question you know how long it sticks but hopefully for the foreseeable future that we'll you know we won't just go out on the Thursday and clap we'll do that every night in different ways you know in different ways you know yeah definitely and like technically now is is cricket season, right? Like, yeah. you know, it's, so you know, it's it's crazy. And I mean, if if lockdown aside, like, how easy or or not easy is it for people to like access cricket? Young people to to start joining in cricket and and go into like clubs and stuff like that. I mean, it's, I think there's a lot of work that's been done, certainly through the England Wales Cricket Board. They they set up a number of schemes which they've gone for. Um, sort of um, deprived areas and areas where there's you know challenges and you know you work in, the, in a lot of these areas yeah um, and where the, the whole youth club system has was broken down when I grew up we went to a youth club and we were kept off the streets god knows what we would have got up to you know so we always had a, a common meeting place and and don't forget back in the day you went to school you you know in, in, in South London we didn't play rugby we weren't posh enough but what we played was cricket or football we basically uh, running it was athletics that was it you know um, so we always had that but obviously that all changed over a period of time so there's a big effort there so they they, they started off um, a, a number of entry level sort of just bat and ball things which is um, 
I'm trying to think of the name. That, that I should know this off the top of my head, but it's a it's a, it's a scheme that was set up um, for youngsters. Uh, they, they they basically get a rucksack, a plastic bat and ball, and they go and they just have fun. And that's right. the entry level, and that's through the England Wales Cricket Ball. Um, and then from there, there's local clubs doing sort of taster sessions and everything else. So there's a lot of information on uh, ecb.co.uk that tells you what's available. And it's broken down into regional areas as well. And, there's, and, and all cricket clubs have got part of their DNA is to be a community club. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and for example, you know, there is a big priority for uh, Surrey Candy Cricket Club to connect with the West Indian and Afro-Caribbean community, which is adjacent through Brixton, my view, yeah. which used to be the backbone of, of cricket when the West Indies used to tour. But because of the economics and that, you know, £100 a ticket and all of that, it's driven a lot of people out, not just if you're from that uh, area, but just generally, so they're looking at different schemes to get people engaged there. But yeah, I think there is plenty of opportunity in public spaces, and they've been opened up. And and you know, and I think that it's much more accessible than it than it was has been for for some time. But it is still more to do there. But there are opportunities. Mm. And in terms of like, are you in contact with any like players and stuff now? Do you know how how they've been dealing with this time and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a bit. You know, last year I I chaired. Um, Jay Dernbach's, um, who is the, Jane Dernbach is the T20 captain for Surrey County Cricket Club. I was chairman for his, um, basically his testimonial year. Um, and I'm still in contact with a number of the players, some that I signed, you know, helped sign and, and, and what have you. It, 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 cricket is like a family, you know, we, we, we sort of keep in contact with that and what have you. And I think it's quite interesting. The players have gone through the TikTok era, which was about doing challenges and everything else. Yeah. They're, the England team have announced they're going to be reporting back for training now. Um, so some of the people I know that are in the England set are going to be going back at different circumstances and strictly controlled and, and everything else. So I think, you know, they're, they're fundamentally no different to, to a lot of us. You know, they get bored, they get frustrated. They're athletes. So they've, they've, they've all, a lot of them, I know the guys at Surrey, were, have got equipment sent to them and, keep fit plans and everything else but again if you look at it that's what they do for a living what i do in the morning i jump around in front of my my tv with fitness blender or something like that because <laughs> i can't go to my gym so they they're doing that but yeah i mean I, I i think it's challenging but i spoke to a player who just retired from middlesex and he he said that you know he's working now but he's, he's just loved having the time with his wife and his uh his, his daughter he said he's just been the best he sounded He's, and it was really good because he's gone from a professional game trying to find out what he was about, you know, and all of a sudden that's taken away from him. And he said, I'm, I really know what's important now. So, so yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, each, each is different, but I think frustrated, get, they get, you know, a, a bit fed up that they can't have the open space and have, you know, you know, going out and play. But it's, you know, the, the, everyone is in the same boat, you know, and... No, you know, I, I, yeah, every, this, this this doesn't discriminate, does it? COVID, you know, no, not <laughs> doesn't at all. discriminate. Not at all. Family members, like you know, wives or, or husbands in, in in some sports and 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 uh, kids are, are loving this time, aren't they? In terms oh, of yeah. having you know their parents together and stuff like that. If they're in, well, the I mean, sport. yeah, I mean, if you're a professional cricketer, you'd probably see your your, your family for two months of the year because you know you're you're going away fixtures and if you're if you're actually playing for England, I don't know, I think it's something ridiculous. You're only back for about three weeks of the year because of the overseas tours of, you know, and then they come back and, and then the wife gets pregnant and, and if they're lucky they get back to see the the baby because 'cause they're all quite young men wanting to have a family or young yeah. ladies because obviously you've got the women's game as well. But yeah, it's I mean it's um it's fine, but but I do think people really want to get out now and enjoy a little bit more freedom. And, and hopefully that will happen when it's good and ready. What we don't want to do is go back so quickly that we end up, you know, with a massive spike. We overwhelm the NHS. And, yeah, I just I just hope people use their common sense and that we don't see 50 barbecues on the beach of Brighton and yeah. all of that, you know, with the bank holiday. That would be tragic. But anyway, each to their own. They have to have their conscience and... Uh, yeah. yeah, that's nice. it. That's great. And I guess um, finally, Zach, as well, you mentioned uh, the P 
people that and the organization and services that you're affiliated to um do you want to just give them a name plug again and, and maybe how anyone listening yeah. could reach them or anything like that sure i mean obviously um simpal where you're simpal uh co uk basically uh chris uh, lewis's charity that he founded um uh, we um you know contact contact them go to the website and see what we're about rainbowtrust.org um the children's charity look you know look at that and and you know it, it's uh it's a wonderful charity looking looking after kids and um and i'm on twitter not that you know anyone really wants to hear my spouting but i'm on twitter uh, uh zach tamazi which is unusual you know uh, that's me uh and I'm, I'm on linkedin as well under the same name and um there aren't many tomatoes on there. I think there's about three on the, on on LinkedIn, and I don't know if there's any on Twitter. But yeah, um, and that's it. Yeah, and if uh, people want to contact me, they can do that. You know, through through those medium, and uh, you know, have a read of my article on LinkedIn, and uh, just tells you a little bit more about where this old old brain is at the moment. And uh, and I'd you know I'd welcome feedback. I'd welcome challenge, and uh, you know, and that's it always progressing always progressing so listen it's been a pleasure thank you so much for engaging in this process of duffus meets it's been great catching up lovely to 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 meet you lovely to spend time with you and i wish you health and uh and i hope you stay safe thank you very much <laughs>